I'm going to make a necklace again. This one is three strand and it has a few little curve balls to throw at you, but nothing difficult. What I'm going to try to do today is I'm going to try to take the camera down so that you can see what I'm doing instead of me trying to lift it up. Hopefully that will work. We'll see. And so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to basically be guessing. I hope that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. This is going to be a three strand necklace. So I'm taking three strands of tiger wire and I'm going to put a crimping bead through and then the eye pin. Now the wire has to go back through the crimping bead and it will fit, it just takes a bit of time, but it will fit. One thing about making these different designs is that it does take patience, but it's well worth doing. Now, once I've gotten them through, as you can see, I've gotten it through, then I'm going to tighten the wires to bring it down. Like so. Trying to guess where it is. I hope you can see it. Then I take some flat nose pliers and squash the crimp so that it now holds the wire shut. They're in place. Then for cosmetic aesthetic value, I take a crimp cover things always fall out of my fingers my fingers don't work as well as they once did never mind I get there eventually it just takes a few minutes there now, having put the crimp cover over it, I then squash that shut. And then the ugly bit is covered. This will also be covered somehow. No, not entirely. I thought I had brass cones, but I don't. Never mind, moving on. We want to make certain that the eye pin is closed. There's a teeny little gap there. And we just want to ensure that it is, in fact, closed so that the wire can't creep through at any point. So I take the flat nose grips again and do that. It's important that you know both the names of this tool. 
because I discovered the hard way looking through websites for grips and the American websites call them pliers. So whichever word you're accustomed to, that's what they are. And once I've gotten that gap closed, still trying to guess where this is all going, you might get seasick by the time this video is done. Hope not, but you can let me know. I can't, oh, I forgot to take my glasses off. I was about to say, I can't tell if I've actually gotten it closed. Silly thing. Do what I tell you. There. Okay, now that it's closed, what we're going to do is put the brass clasp on. I love these magnetic clasps. For me, they're so much easier to use so that I don't have to try to get my fingers round some of these little buttons. And I take the needle nose pliers. And this is a bit tricky when you're working with magnetic clasps because the tools do try to stick to them. So again, you just need patience. Bend that wire down and you need to make a loop. You use your, fin you use your fingers and your tools to make a loop. And you just want to ensure that that loop is well closed. And once you've gotten it nicely closed, you take your wire cutters and cut off the little bit there. Press it down, press it down. Go down, little piece, go down. until it's smashed flat. Now, if you want it a bit smoothed, I have all of these nice little things. And these little files are ever so handy. Because I can use them to just file across that until you get it smoothed. And once it's smoothed, won't feel it. These things do tend to take a bit of time, but again, when it's done, you'll find that it's well worth it. Smash it down a little bit more. Done. Now, comes the fun 
bit. In order to have the beads come up fully to this bead, I haven't been able to find smart beads in brass at all. So I'm thinking that I'm going to try. Oh, smart beads, in case you didn't know. I'm assuming that you might know. Smart beads, if you don't know, are beads with wide holes, which can be used to hide all of the wire and bits. So I'm going to see if this brass bead will do that well enough. Will it get, will all six wires go through that hole? Because it almost does look wide enough and it did. So, I will get one more. And there it is, perfectly hidden and secure. Now, each of these strands is going to have chips. I've got them all mocked up and ready. I'm just going to string these on each of the strands and then I'll come back. Okay, so I have the three strands all beaded now and you want to pull them taut to be certain that the wires don't show from the end. All they see is bead. Then we're going to take these three strands and thread them through a big ball. Just the ball. Push that tight and now we're going to separate the three threads and put more chips on. I'll be right back. Okay, next step. Now I'm going to put all three strands through A nugget. And then, this is the only time I personally chose to use a brass bead. I feel that put, trying to put a brass bead in here, the bead would simply disappear. So I didn't but I am using them between the nugget and the focal, which is going to be 
this little fan of tapered beads. And these are just a little bit tight. I think the holes in this particular, in this particular fan, the beads are, the holes are just a bit tight. But they will go. And the remarkable thing is that they also fit so tightly that they hold everything taut. And you do want to make certain that you put each piece on with the rounded edge, with the rounded edge forward so that it all matches, it's all uniform. It takes a little bit of work when they're tight, but it will fit. So those are the first two pieces of the fan. So in order to keep this video as short as possible, I'm going to finish the fan and then come back. I am going to show you one thing that happens as you're putting on the fan pieces. I don't know if you can see, but these wires will begin to twist up. So what you have to do is just try to keep them straight so that there's just the three flat wires and you just have to work with this bead just move it as you need to move it to just make certain that the wires stay straight here you can see that they're beginning to twist up I think you can see that they're beginning to twist up all that needs doing is for you to just keep carefully working the threads, and the strands on both sides of the bead so that you can work it back into being straight again. So this is a bit time consuming, but it's well worth it because it's quite a traumatic piece. So I'm just letting you know that if you, if you, if you do decide to try to make it, and you can make this with anything. Uh, these tapered beads come in all different kinds of beads. Then when you notice this beginning to happen, because you're, you're squishing three strands through this little hole, just keep working with it to keep them straight as you're putting them all on the strand. I'll be right back. I actually just thought of something. don't know why I've never thought of it before, but I just wondered what would happen if I tried to thread them one thread at a time. I wasn't certain that it would work, but I thought, well, let's try. And I found that by threading And then the second one. And it's not that easy, but it's easier than fighting with them. Once I had the two wired through, then I brought the bead back and then it was easier to control the three wires f 
from twisting. I wonder if, I wonder if any of you thought of that while you were watching me struggle with that. If you thought about doing it one wire at a time, come on, third wire, get in there. After I'd done two of these beads like that, I thought, yeah, this will work. So then, of course, it doesn't because I wanted to, to show you. So, of course, it wouldn't work. It's always the way, isn't it? There it comes. Okay. So then, pulling the third wire through and keeping it straight. Don't let it twist and crimp. Then, it goes quite easily down. So I think it takes a little bit less time doing it that way. Don't know why I'd never thought of that before. <laughs> oh well. And this is where that twisting problem comes in. What I'm seeing is that as I'm trying to string this one, these two wires are twisted. So by doing it this way, I'm able to untwist the wires while they're still out of the bead. Then I put the top wire through this bead. Oh, serious, I don't know why I never thought of that. If you thought of this as you were watching me pat yourself on the back, then when you're pulling it and it starts to twist like this, you just straighten it out so that it carries on, so that it carries on going straight. Then you can take the third one, which will also be beginning to get twisted. I don't know if you can see how it's twisting in there. What you can then do is untwist it before it gets wrapped up. In there. Come on, out you go. There we are. There we are, that's rescued. And then thread it in. And there we go. Come back here where they can see you. Ah, oh, this drifted a bit far. But I sh it should be alright though, yeah. Because I'd straightened out the wires, even though it had, it had drifted so far up, it still worked. So now I'll finish it and be back. Okay. Now... That was so much easier. All these years I've been doing it that way. It just suddenly occurred to me to try this. And it's so much easier to untwist the wires before they go through than it is afterward. But there's this part of the necklace done. And so now, since you've already seen how I do it, I'm just going to finish the other side and then I'll come and show you how I tie it off. Okay, I finished it. So now, the last end. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We need a crimping bead. And then an eye pin. Now oh, I'm over here. Then an eye pin. The camera's upside down, so I'm actually trying to see if I if I'm where you can see me. And then like before. going to need to put these three 
through this. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a second crimping bead because that's what we did with the other one, isn't it? See, I'm not going to be able to do it quite the same way, obviously, because the beads went on second the last time, but still, two crimping beads on one end, two crimping beads on this end, why not? Would help if they all three got into the bead, wouldn't it? Come along now. Cooperate, we're almost done. There we are. And then the eye pin. Okay. Now, back to threading these three through the crimping wire. There's one bead, and there's the other bead. Did they all go through? Nope, I didn't think so. Right, here's one. Now they're all through. Okay, so making sure that everything is taut, then pull that down. But this end is a bit trickier. This end tends to want to always be looser. And so it's difficult to get it to work. Pull up to pull the wires up and pull down to pull these through. Make sure that you pull up again you have to keep making sure that these are tight. The last closing is the most difficult for this reason, that it keeps slipping. So you have to keep pulling. And that's why it's good to have the eye pin in already, because it will keep that loop open. So you just keep working it through. takes some doing but the thing is you can keep telling yourself it's almost done it's almost done because it is it's almost done okay I think now I've got it low enough that I can try pulling one strand at a time to pull it down get back up there I have to make certain that these stay up. So come on, up. Get those beads back up there.
and this pot does take a long time which is fine as I said you know you just keep realizing that this is the last bit after this you're away home and dry as they say Trying to make sure that that last bit is good and tight. Okay, and I think that is as tight as it's going to get. So, take the eye pin. Okay, I've got that pulled down top. So now I'm going to take flat nosed grips and crush the crimps down tight. Then the flush wire cutters. And for this one, because it's not hidden in the bead, I can't see if you can tell, but I'm getting flush to the crimp. Not all the way to the crimp, but really close and then cut off that wire so that you have see if I can help you see it you have just a tiny bit of wire hanging out still but it'll hide in the beads and you want that to make certain that it's secure then we now get the other end of this brass thing which has connected itself to beads and again we want to wrap it into a loop and using the grips and your fingers you can make a loop around And get your wire cutters cut that close There we go. Get these and flatten it one last time. Smooth it if you want to, if we feel like you need to. Just enough so that it doesn't scratch your neck. Because this doesn't have a cone. 
I would so like to find brass cones like the silver ones that I have because all of this would be hidden under the cone and then you wouldn't have to worry about these things. That said, let's now bring this up and show you what it looks like on. And this is what we have. Nice dramatic necklace. The thing about these earrings were made to go with it. And the thing about dramatic necklaces is you want to balance the drama. So simpler earrings and a simpler design with the fan. Other designs that I have, which are not so dramatic, I can put beads between each of these tapered beads and that gives the fan a little bit of drama. But with all of these, that's probably enough drama. You might disagree. You might choose to do it differently. I would be interested in seeing how you might choose to add your own twist. Remember, it is my copyrighted design. So if you do choose to use it, I know some of you are not the original group of people I was making these videos for. So if you choose to make a video of yourself making this design, even if you want to change a little something, do give me credit for the original design. And I also get to see what you're doing and see how you're benefiting from these videos, which is good. But I love this and I love the way it goes with the khaki. It's a good color and it's a nice piece. So I hope you enjoyed this. It was a rather long one, but this was a very difficult piece. So see you later.